Polly put the kettle on. Polly put the kettle on. Polly put the kettle on. We'll all have tea. Suki, take it off again. Suki, take it off again. Suki, take it off again. They've all gone away. Polly put the kettle on. Polly put the kettle on. Polly put the kettle on. We'll all have tea. Today's story is called Collecting Colour and it's written by Kylie Dunstan. This is Rose. Rose has a best friend. Her name is Olive. Their families live in the top end of the Northern Territory of Australia. There are lots of pandanus palms here. Pandanus palms have tall, thin trunks with long, spiky leaves at the top. Olive's mother, Karang, makes beautiful coloured baskets, mats and bags from pandanus leaves. The most special of these are used in important ceremonies. But some bags and baskets can be used for collecting bush food. carrying shopping from the supermarket and sometimes they are even used to hold small babies. Karang collects the pandanus, stringy bark and colour from the bush with her friends. Today Rose and Olive are going to help. She only wants the softest and newest shoots of pandanus leaves. These are at the very top of the spiky palm. Karang reaches for these leaves with a long stick, which is hooked at one end. This is called a hook stick. Often there are nests of pesky green ants in the palms. Be careful where you sit, warns Olive. Green ants have a ferocious bite. I once collected a nest in my pandanus bag and was bitten all the way home. Olive's auntie has found some stringy bark. She gives Rose some to chew. This makes the brown bark soft enough to turn into bush string bags. The bark tastes sweet, like gum, so Rose chews happily for some time before her jaw begins to ache. Need more practice, says Auntie, grinning, when she sees Rose rubbing her sore face. When Karang has collected enough pandanus to fill her sack, they rest in the deep cool shade. Picking pandanus is very hot work. Their day is not finished yet. There is still colour for dyeing the pandanus to be found. Karang tells Rose to look for a small bush with big leaves, like the sun. This is where we find yellow colour, she says. Rose sees a small plant that looks like the one Karang has described. Maybe this is the one Karang, Rose shouts to her. Yes, yes, she says, squinting in her direction. 
I think you maybe have found some rose. Kerrang walks to the plant and starts digging at its roots, tugging occasionally to try and free it from the soil. She digs deeper and tugs harder, but still the roots hold strong. Auntie comes to help her pull. Suddenly the roots let go of the earth. Auntie and Kerrang tumble over laughing. Kerrang holds up the bright yellow roots. Big mob's yellow colour from this one, she says happily. Now we need those pink berries for colour. They all pile in the dusty white car, eyes scanning the land for little hot pink berries. Auntie sees them first and holds up a hand for the car to stop. They clamber out and, using their shirts as baskets, fill them to overflowing with the small berries. It is midday now and because the hot sun is overhead, they must find some shade by the river. They sit on the high bank, well out of the way of any crocodiles, and cast their hand lines into the murky green water while munching on their lunch. Rose loves to whiz her line around in the air and feel it fly out into the river when she lets go. Kerrang and Auntie have packed a picnic lunch of cold manimunak, magpie goose, sandwiches and icy water. Slowly she drags her line back to the bank, hoping that a fish will bite. Auntie is lucky today. On only her third cast, she drags in a beautiful big silver barramundi. Supper will be good tonight. When they get home and unload the car, Kerrang makes a campfire under the big old bunion tree in her yard. She places the yellow and pink colour collected today in billy cans of water to boil on the fire, along with some roots that make orange and brown. The pandanus pick today needs to be dried before being coloured. So Kerrang and Auntie use some that is already dry. A handful of pandanus is soaked in each of the colours, then laid out flat to dry overnight. While the pandanus is drying, Kerrang throws the fish onto the campfire to cook. In an hour, she peels back the scales and scoops up the sweet white barramundi meat. It is delicious, and Rose falls asleep that night with a full belly. And dreams of the beautiful coloured mat she plans to make. Auntie, Kerrang, Olive and Rose sit under the bunion tree for days. Rose has found a curved part of the enormous grey root which makes a perfect rest for her back. They push their big shiny needles in and around the coloured pandanus keeping it tight and strong with their spare hand. Kerrang is weaving a beautiful basket and Auntie a bush string bag. But Olive and Rose are making small mats 
because they are still learning. In three days they are finished. The weavings are a beautiful sight. Nagbad, Olive's father, comes over to look at what they have been up to. Good baskets, he says to Karang and Auntie. Very strong and tight. Beautiful colours. But these ones, he says, picking up the mats from the ground. These are special. I will put these mats on the wall for everyone to see what clever weavers my Olive and her friend Rose are. And that's the end of the story. Polly put the kettle on, Polly put the kettle on, Polly put the kettle on, we'll all have tea. Suki, take it off again, Suki, take it off again, Suki, take it off again, they've all gone away. Polly put the kettle on, Polly put the kettle on, Polly put the kettle on, we'll all have tea.